Hi, welcome back to Stock Talk. This is Joe Rabel with Rabel Stock Research. So uh, I figured I'd do a lesson on swing trading just to give you a different feel. We're starting to see some signs that maybe the volatility is dropping a little bit, and that's usually a better time to maybe think about doing some swing trades. But I also want you to think a little out of the box temp, uh, from time to time. And I'm going to show you, let me go to the agenda. I want to show you how you do need to be a little bit more flexible sometimes when you're looking for trades. So this is a pullback trade, but it's a little bit unorthodox, a little bit different than I typically would look for. Um, and I want to show you that. I also want to show you how I would go about going down to the smaller time frame to reduce the risk in the trade and also improve my timing. Um, and then thirdly, I, I, you can even keep going down time frames to really fine tune that entry. So we're going to go through all that and then we're going to go through the uh, individual symbol requests that came through. Let's go ahead and get into this lesson now. OK, so I've got four time frames up of Netflix, but uh, I've got the daily in the bottom left. Uh, the hourly is in the bottom right, a 10 minute in the upper right and then a two minute in the upper left. Now, I don't want to focus too much on the uh, the short micro time frames, but I did want to use them uh, as a quick uh, confirmation tool. So let's just start with the daily chart. And I what I want to point out here is there are several factors. This doesn't look like a classic uh, swing trade, right? I mean, we've got um, a, a big gap up. The moving average, the 18 hasn't even crossed above the 40. The 40 is still declining. But there are times in the type of environment we're in where you're going to have to adapt a little bit based on uh, what what is available to you. And uh, I would suggest you to understand uh, and learn this undercut and rally pattern out of my course. Um, and if you notice this break below this um, August low we had, right? And then right right before earnings, this was looking pretty awful. And then it came out with the earnings and it gapped up and literally gapped up back through this low and closed above it. And then we got a little bit more of a push here. OK, and I actually think this is very bullish. A lot of times what we see nowadays with everybody getting the news at the same time, you gap up and then you just immediately start to pull back. So when I see this and I see continuation over the next three to five days, even higher than the gap up day, that usually means to me there's some institutional involvement here. They're, they're, it takes them a little bit longer to get uh, fully invested. And um, I, that's usually what I'm thinking when I see that. Now, we know we've got that uh, break above this prior low. And then what happens is on a pullback, it actually acts as support. So what was resistance acts as support. It's a, uh, a great thing to be on the lookout for. Also, I put in my Fib grid, and whenever I'm looking at a, I look at the last key swing high and the last key swing low. And if we retrace more than 50% of that, that's usually a bullish sign that the path of least resistance is switching back to the upside. Now, I can tell you that if you blow right through the 382 and you blow right through the 50%, there's a pretty high probability you're going to pull back at the, at the 618. However, in many cases, you will either find support at the 50% or at the 382 on a pullback. In this case, it came back to the 50% retracement and it held this area where it had uh, broken down from. So we've got a pretty strong evidence developing because MACD is showing signs of life crossing back, crossing back above the zero line. And you can see with the histogram, this is forming a pinch play as well as this makes lower highs. I also like the fact that the green DI is crossed over here. You see that? Look at the volume pattern. You see that massive volume? There's a high correlation between volume and DI. So I love that when I see the green DI breaking back above the red like that. And then we get the pullback and, and green holds above the 25 line and above the red. So we've got this pullback setting up. We know we're at a pretty key level using that prior low. So then what I want to do is I want to evaluate this pullback and I want to use my hourly, the next time frame down, to help me identify uh, and improve my timing and lower my risk. So during that pullback, I've already uh, got this area set up. This is I, I scrolled back on these charts so you can and we can instantly see. So these are the this is the two to three bar pullback on the hourly. We got some overrun. That's where the MACD and its signal line cross back below the zero uh, the uh, the zero level. 
Okay. And when I see that, I'm just sort of thinking, I don't want to necessarily just buy the moment this starts to cross back up to the upside because a lot of times you get a cross up and then it comes all the way back down and, and, and it just increases the likelihood of a potential stop out. So what I like to do is let it pull, push up and take the second signal. Normally in the ver it's, it normally sets up some form of a higher low. Now in this case, it happened right at the 18 and it formed its own pinch. Do you see how this formed a pinch play here? Let's just uh, look at this real quick. You can see how this held the signal line as it was pulling back. So we want to be on the lookout for that whenever we get a two to three bar pullback, especially if there's signs of improving strength. All right. Now, the other thing I like to look for is whether the red DI is showing any signs of strength, and it's not. So the buyers are still in command. We know we've got a pretty good look to it. You can absolutely take this trade as it's coming back up through this high. Absolutely no problem here. Um, it's in the middle to early, you know, middle part of the day. So you have two or three hours to see if you get any follow through, which I like to do when I'm doing these swing trades. I'd rather do them earlier in the day rather than like the last hour. Uh, but in this case, we get the, the three bar pullback. You can take that trigger now because there was a little gap in here. All right. And we have the move down. Now I do got a doji bar and I've got a little narrow range bar. I mean, I've got pretty high confidence in this based on the fact that it's holding MACD looks good. ADX is in a good position, but I might just take a quick peek at the 10 minute. And in this case, here's the gap down day. All right. Pretty heavy volume there. A little bit of red DI showing up. So, and we got a clear overrun of the zero line. So what I might do here is go ahead and let this form a higher low at the 18, which it did with a pinch play and no sign of, and it's actually a low ADX condition and play that pullback. And if I wanted to get really nitpicky about it, I'd go over here and I'd see that on that pullback, it was a zero line reversal with low ADX. So these are all patterns right out of my course uh, that and my book that um, I think can be useful when you're playing the pullback trade. I think uh, it can be uh, incredibly helpful to know these little uh, nuances in the way things play out with the moving averages, with the MACD, with ADX, uh, and then obviously the price structure. All right, let's go ahead and move on to um, the uh, individual stocks. If you're enjoying the content, hit that like button and also subscribe. Uh, so my research can be found at rablestockresearch.com. My suggestion is if you're if you have an interest in learning more about some of the strategies that I use, I would start with the book. I'm offering at a discount right now. If you go to rablestockresearch.com forward slash book, uh, you can get some more information about that. I'm going to start out by answering a viewer question uh, regarding the low uh, and the hourly reversal off the low uh, that we just made at the end of October, early November. So if we look at the way this took place, uh, the question was asked and they correctly drew in the downtrend line. And what they're asking is, if that's the one, right, the break of the downtrend, can this little dip here be considered the two um, in this situation? Because it only retraced thir about 30% um, from here to here. And normally I say, you know, a third is is like the minimum requirement to have uh, to have really form a swing that can be considered a test of this low. Um, but in this situation, I think you can look at it like that is the two. All right. Now, in the heat of the moment, it, it might be not as crystal clear. You might not be looking at this saying it's a very obvious two. But there's a few things you can do to help with this. All right. First of all. We, we made this move up and we got really close to the 40. And, and obviously one of the patterns out of my book is called a 40 to 18 bounce. That's where you rally up to the 40 and then you pull back to the 18 and then turn up. And so it's sort of a sign of a reversal. Now it needs to coincide with the break of the trend line. So we broke the trend line. So we basically did that and confirmed it. And then um, – the pullback, we again, we'd like to see it come back to the 18. Well, we got pretty close. It didn't quite make it. So we've got this situation where it's it's doing essentially what we were looking for, but just not doing it in a way that makes it really obvious. So what I would suggest is a couple of things. Number one, 
we always want to look at the moving averages. And this is how I go through when I go through the course, I talk about the price action with the one, two, three reversals and price structure. But then you want to confirm that using the moving averages. All right. And what I've done is I've put out arrows in here. This is where price at this level Price is below both moving averages and the 18 is below the 40 and both lines are declining. Okay, so that is that to me is confirmed downtrend at that point. So I always have that as a fail safe. I know that the trend has shifted when I look at an 18 below the 40 and price is below both lines. I know I've got a, a trend in place as long as they're both declining. Now, if we go through and look, the next time that switched was right here. That's where price is above the 18, 840. Both lines are starting to rise right about here. And we've turned that to the upside. And then if you notice, the reverse of that takes place here. And we get a clear reversal at that point. And then at this point right here is where, as this is turning back up, we get both lines turning up and price is above both. So you can use that as a fail-safe kind of uh, backdrop and make sure, okay, have I reversed the trend? Well, if I see this and I know the price is trending higher, then I've got that. Now, I do like to look at the MACD, making sure it's crossed the zero line along with the signal. Um, and I like to see Green DI confirming that signal. So if I have that, I want to have confirmation on a MACD and ADX basis, and we have that in all these cases. All right. Now, so you can use that. Now, there's another thing you could do when it when it's when it's a fast market and we know it's really quick. You can go down to a 30 minute chart. This is something I would suggest in this scenario. And that's where the market's just moving really, really quickly. And you can tell there's a, there's a change in the nature of the way the market's trading. And if you look at it from this standpoint, because we're using a 30 minute, now all of a sudden we can use these retracements to create a trend line. The trend line is a good trend line because it's parallel to the 18. We make a move up and we hit the 40 and then we pull back to the 18. This is so blatantly obvious, this signal. And that is a one, two, three reversal. When the lines turn up, it happens a couple bars after we get the one, two, three. That's what we want. We want to see the one, two, three. So this is the three here. And then a few bars after that, we get the confirmation with the moving averages, okay? And we have MACD. ADX took a little bit more time, but Green DI did get going again. So we've got pretty much everything we're looking for on this time frame. And in a fast market, that is not a bad way to handle that. So those are a couple ideas for you. Always use the, the moving averages to help um, determine the price structure and what the trend is. And then um, go down to a, a, not all the way to a small time frame, like a 10 minute, but go to like from a 60 minute to a 30 minute. And that might give you a better feel for what's taking place. All right, let's, um, let's go ahead and get going with some of the symbols. And I want to start with the QQQ and the IWM again. Um, I do think it's worthwhile to stay consistent. All right, we've, we showed that we had on a monthly chart, we had pulled back for three months came back to kind of a support area. We were showing a pinch develop. Green DI was much stronger than red DI uh, during this phase. And then on, on the pullback, we came back all the way to the 40 week or the 200 day. We showed a lot of strength on the move to the upside. And then during this ABC decline, the MACD just kind of worked its way back down towards zero. So I think this is pretty bullish what's taking place. Um, and then we've gotten this really dynamic move uh, to the upside. I would be watching for a pullback in this or maybe just a pause. It's possible we're not going to get a full-fledged pullback in the general indices. All right. Just if you look at the individual stocks, you'll see pullbacks. But if you're looking for a specific entry on the indices, it might get a little tougher just because I think a lot of people got left behind with this drop. This drop created bears and I think it raised some cash and now people are trying to get in. So every little dip, you're, you're, you're seeing cash being deployed. And that seems like what's taking place. So um, not saying that we can't pull back and get a decent little uh, check back here, but it's also possible it'll just drift upward. Um, the time of the year is suggesting to me that um, the path of least resistance is to the upside for now. Okay, let's look at IWM. Now, we had one really phenomenal great day. 
didn't we? I mean, this this was up what uh five percent or something like that. One of the best days, and it, and almost every stock in the index was up, and the volume was good. I mean, we had everything we wanted, but that's just one day, right? I mean, yesterday was really not all that great. We started topping out, and today we're down. So it's not ideal how this is playing out because as I've been saying over and over again at nauseum here is this line, this relative strength line, I really want to see improvement in this. Now, it doesn't mean the market can't go up if this line is down. We can go through periods where, uh, where the S&P and the uh, NASDAQ, they'll make decent moves to the upside. But if we're talking about a sustainable trending move with a lot of participation where you can be a stock pick, yeah, you can be buying individual stocks and participating in a way that is really advantageous to you. I don't think it's a great environment while this line is declining. I hope that's clear to you. So it's not like you can't make money. It's just not that it's not what I would consider to be a really um, fantastic uh, environment where you can step in and pick out really quality names and expect to make money kind of across the board, no matter what the market cap is. Um, we want to see more price. We want to see more expansion in the general market. Um, when you look at the broader lists, you want to see more stocks participating and that will give us a better um, idea of whether this move is going to be sustainable or not. All right. I got a number of questions about gold. So I want to spend a few minutes. So first I'm going to talk about the GLD. And, and one thing I want to point out is We've got something going on here that I like. I like a lot. And when I, if I see it, I, I want to, I definitely want to try and take advantage of it when I see it. And that is we have an 18 month line right here that's rising just below the last month's low. And we have an 18 week line that's now rising underneath the low of this week and last week. All right. When I have two back to back time frames with price near in the proximity of the 18 and they're rising. So both of these are just trying to lift off the 18. I view this as being very powerful and this can be done in any two time frames. But if you have two consecutive time frames where the 18 is starting to lift off underneath. Now I'd like to have confirming information on the MACD and the ADX and all that. But if I have that with the price, I, I that is a really, um, encouraging sign. Now we do have MACD. We have a MACD pinch play and we got a zero line reversal happening, taking place here. So I like the looks of this. I, I'd like to see a little bit more dynamics uh, in terms of strength. I'd like to see some bigger bars. We're getting some bars that are like gapping up, but not having a lot of follow through. I'd like to see a little bit more follow through after the gap up. But generally speaking, I'm very intrigued by what's taking place. Now, if we start to look at so some of the questions that have come in are, are the gold miners and the gold miner juniors. Now, if we look at the difference here, do you see how this is below the 18 and this is below? So this is doing the opposite. This is actually below a declining and below a declining. Do you see what I mean? They're not. So I like the picture of the GLD, um, but this one is not quite as attractive. Now, it's really easy to know why. If you look at NEM, uh, Newmont Mining, or you go and look at Barrick Gold, which is GOLD, go look at those charts. They look terrible. They're actually uh, underperforming even this index. So not quite as attractive. We don't have any momentum condition in place. So if we're going to play this, it doesn't look awful. All right. This has made a move up and it's kind of coming back and testing this area. There's a lot of support underneath, but we need some strength coming back up through the 18 and the 40 week. And I want to see some green DI. I want to see this green DI kind of break out. If we have that, then I'd start to feel a lot more encouraged about this ETF. Now, if I go and look at the uh, GDXJ, I, I, this is actually a little bit more encouraging because we've got MACD holding the signal line during this pullback. And it's right around, it's trading around the uh, 18 rather than below it. So I view this as a counter um, trend um, parallel lines pattern. So parallel counter. So these are going this way and these are going the other way. So I'm a little bit more encouraged by this, but we still need a trigger. We need to see this strengthening coming back up through the 40 week. Um, so 
I mean, I think what I would tell you is I'm, I'm more favorable towards the juniors. And it's not surprising. If we start to look at another question I got was on this AGI. You know, this is a little bit on the smaller side. Look at the pattern here. I mean, you can go and look at the NEM. Go look at the uh, GOLD. They don't look anything like this. You can start to look at stocks like this and uh, HMY. Go look at some of the gold stocks and the smaller cap names. These are looking pretty attractive. Um, I think this looks really good. Um, so I, I think uh, the question was asked, was this a good trigger? Um, and you're using it on the weekly chart, looking at this as a monthly weekly. I completely agree with that part. The daily is actually a little, you know, it's, it's not showing a whole lot of strength yet. So I like the fact that you're giving it a little room based on the weekly, uh, um, average true range and the, uh, weekly moving averages. And I do think this is a longer term play. It looks like if this can hold the 18 week and we start to see a lift off of some of these, uh, indexes. This stock could be one of the leaders. Um, okay, let's go to CCJ. This is in um, the uranium area and absolutely just the absolute leader in that area. Look at the move this has made. Look at the ADX. Strong, strong play. Now, this is more of a stock that I would consider a hold now. It's not really a buy. This is really far away from the 18-month line. So when this was sitting on the 18-month here and it was coming off the 18-week here, this is where I would put it. This is where I'm highlighting these stocks on my reports. That's That was a highlight here, all right, after this big green bar and we got a little pullback. So somewhere in there um, is, is where we want to be doing something like this. I don't think now, now I think if I'm going to do this, I mean, I, I don't even want to do this off the daily. To me, it's just kind of a little too late. It's um, probably going to finish the year on an up note, but I, I think that we probably are going to start to correct early next year, at least um, after the move that it's made. It's just had a big run here in a very short period of time. Um, okay, so question asked about the TAN getting uh, bludgeoned to the downside. Is this a potential uh, bottoming pattern? And the question was really asked about the short-term um, you know, uh, situation developing and how and what, how you would look at this. And I, I guess the, I just, to me, this looks like a minor rally up towards the 18 week. I, I know there, there's a lot of bearishness around this. And, uh, I think it was on the cover of Barron's I was told, uh, as a big negative. I mean, it's possible this is the start of something, but we still got to let the charts prove, that there's, there's a bottom being made. And I don't really want to jump the gun. Unless I'm a trader, I might want to do this parallel lines pattern here and trade it, right? And, and then I'd be getting in and out and I'd try and be getting out before I hit the 18 week. But that's about all I'd be willing to do right now. I think it's way too early to be thinking about anything else. Um, now, Fang on the short side. So uh, again, question asked here if this was rallying up here and we started to sell off. Well, I don't really like this pattern because this was a parallel lines. See this counter parallel lines. We've got 18 kind of, you're hugging the 18 on the way down and the MACD's going the other way. Yeah, the, the ADX was negative, but this is telling us the timing was not right. And now we're showing a lot more strength to the upside. I think this is a very neutral pattern trying to hold the 18 month and the MACD on the monthly is telling us that I think this is trying to turn the corner. I don't think I want to get too bearish on this stock, frankly. Um, let's look at FANG. Now, this is not surprising to see seeing this weakness here. If you go and look at the oil chart, oil has broken 80. OK, that was not a good sign for this, this uh, for this uh, uh, area. OK, for number one. But then we can start to evaluate what's been taking place in these. And what I've been talking about with my subscribers here is this move up, this strength to the upside is not showing the kind of confirmation on an ADX basis that we really want to see. And um, with the recent pullback, we're actually starting to see a loss in relative performance. Look at how this is starting to really drop off. You see how this is dropping off? And it's even worse than some of the other stocks. So I'm not saying that this can't be played. It's sitting up, sitting right around an 18-week above a 40. I'm just telling you, I think the likelihood of this turning around and triggering us in, I think is very unlikely. I, I, I Just based on what I'm seeing overall in uh, the whole area. Um, one more chart. Let's look at Apple. 
Look at how Apple found support at the 18 month after three months down, had a pinch play develop, had an ABC down with a zero line reversal and low ADX. I mean, this is the kind of pattern we're on the lookout for. Now, it was a very abrupt reversal. We could look for some kind of a little check back after the earnings now, see if we can't get a little higher low to form on the daily chart. I think this would look pretty good for an intermediate term trading move. I think this wants to go, maybe even to go test the highs or go to a new high. Thanks for watching the show. Uh, my research can be found at RabelStockResearch.com. If you want to learn more about MACD and ADX and multiple time frames, check out my YouTube channel, Invest Like a Pro. And uh, also, if you have stock requests, send them to StockTalk at StockCharts.com. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time.